Hi, this is Katie Prejean, author of Room 24, Adventures of a New Evangelist. I'm a teacher, I'm a youth minister, and I'm a speaker based out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, a tiny town full of Cajuns. And let me tell you something about Cajuns. We like to tell our stories, Chef. We like to tell all the stories about the little fish that was just this big, but it ended up this big by the time Dad tells the story for the thousandth time at the Thanksgiving table. Now, growing up in a big Cajun family that loved to eat and loved to talk, we always had these stories to share back and forth, and, and we were such a fun-loving, jovial family. My little sister would walk around with a joke book and would just tell us all these goofy jokes, like how much did it cost the pirate to get his ear pierced? A buck an ear. Or even worse, what did one monocle say to the other monocle? Let's get together and make a spectacle of ourselves. And you hear these cheesy jokes and you groan. They're all groan-worthy cheesy jokes that make you just wish that you'd never tuned into this Blink episode by any means. But this joy that can radiate from a cheesy joke or for a moment sharing a story or from just a moment sitting down with somebody and talking about what went really well that day. That, that joy that radiates from us is a witness to Christ. You know, stuck in Lent Catholics, something that Pope Francis has talked about a couple of times, stuck in Lent Catholics don't get us anywhere. These people that walk around in ashes and sackcloth who tell us, oh, woe is me, I need the Lord's mercy. Yeah, you need the Lord's mercy. And how wonderful, how joyful that he gives us his mercy. See, our joy, when we share that Christian joy, Pope Francis tells us in Evangelii Gaudium that our Christian joy is a drinking of the wellspring of Christ's heart. When we show joy, we show Christ's love. And so our joy that flows from his charity is a witness to his love, is a witness to the Good Friday moment. We look at a cross, we should be joyful. We should be sorrowful, yes, that our sins are what put him there, but joyful that he chose to embrace that cross. When our evangelization efforts might seem a little worn, or we might be a little exhausted by what we're trying to do, we must remember that our evangelization, first and foremost, this adventure should be attractive. This adventure should be one that when people look at us, they see a joy radiating from within. They see not necessarily just a tigger bouncing off the walls all the time, but somebody that is so deeply seated in his charity and love that we cannot help but share that joy. You know, look at Mother Teresa, a woman so short and so wrinkly you could stick a quarter in her face and it would stay there, but one of the most beautiful women in the world, one of the most photographed women in the world, and, and people would look at her and they would say, I want that, I want to be that. Holiness is attractive. Or what about John Paul II? A man stooped over in such intense pain, and I had the privilege of seeing a cassock of JP2s not too long ago, and I was struck by the fact that the front part of the cassock is shorter than the back because he was so stooped over that they had to make it different lengths. This man who was suffering for years radiated a love greater than his own feeble body. What about St. Francis of Assisi, a man who sells his right to the family business, gives up a promising career in the military to go live in total poverty, has no real intention of starting an order, just wanted to go live for Christ, have this radical conversion for Christ, people start following him. People just start following this man that used to hate lepers and now hugs them. This man that throws himself into bushes to, to swear off temptations. This man that doesn't want shoes on his feet, doesn't want money to his name, but just wants to live radically for the Lord, a man wrapped with joy. See, we as we evangelize in this great adventure that we are set on, as we share our faith, our lives have to radiate this deep joy that is found only in the Lord. It doesn't mean we're always gonna be happy with a fake smile plastered on our face. But it does mean that we have our confidence and our hope placed in a Lord that resurrects, placed in a Lord that died on a Friday and rolled back that stone on a Sunday. And that joy is what's gonna draw people to an encounter with Him. That joy is what's gonna reinforce our efforts. That joy is what's gonna set us on a path to winning souls for the church and for the Lord. To find out more about joy and to figure out how your adventures of evangelization can be more joyful, check out my book, Room 24, Adventures of a New Evangelist from Ave Maria Press, or go to my website, katieprejean.com. Thanks so much for joyfully tuning in.